blessings to all blessings to all come on in just uh looking for a few scriptures but come on in people of god come on in blessings to all of you so good to have you blessings come on in share the broadcast once you've shared the broadcast go ahead type share in the comment section once you've done that listen come on in come on in i'm here to answer some of the questions as you know, um, a lot of people have been emailing me. A lot of people have been, been sending me messages on Messenger. And so I just decided to answer some of the questions on live. Just so that, the, you know, if two people ask me the same questions, ten people ask me the same questions, I just wanted to do a live feed so that it will cover uh, those uh, questions and you will have the answer always on YouTube and on Facebook that you can always go back to it. And so it will be everyone, you know, asking the same questions over and over again. So come on and share the broadcast. Um, it's so good how all of you, blessings to all of you. Those of you watching via on Facebook, those of you watching on YouTube, I'll be uh, uh, sending this recording over to YouTube in a few minutes or right when we're done. I should have gone live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, but I really didn't think about it um i do apologize but i will um um after i'm done i'm going to upload it to youtube but just give me a few minutes as you um share the broadcast come on in fellowship with each other come on in and share the broadcast and i will go ahead and continue looking i need about two more scriptures uh that, that i'm looking for but come on in come on in come on in Blessings to all. Thank you for coming on in. Thank you for coming on in. Blessings to all of you. I have one more scripture I need to locate.
Blessings to all of you. Thank you for coming on in. Thank you for coming on in. Blessings to all of you. I really do appreciate all of you tonight. Blessings and thank you for coming on in. I appreciate all of you for coming on to in tonight. Thank you for waiting on me. Was looking for a few scriptures. Uh, may the Lord continue to bless you. Hey, let's go into a quick word of prayer. Father, we give you all of the praise. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor that is due unto your name, for there is no one else like you. Father, as I come before your people, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will, Father God, fill me as only you can, Father God, empty me of everything that is inside of me everything that is not of you empty me father god so that i may continue to speak your word father god unadulterated word father and so god i pray father god that your holy spirit will fill me up father god let marvel do us decrease as you increase in me speak to your people tonight father as only you can let them hear your voice let them see you and not marvel father i pray father today that they will not remember marvel but they will remember the words that you speak to them and so god i give you praise glory and honor somebody come on in my Magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Somebody come on and magnify the Lord with me. For truly he is great and he is worthy uh, to be praised. Hallelujah. For truly he is great. I try and figure out if I can see better with or without this one. Because uh, for some reason my other glasses that I can see better in is for some reason a little, a little dirty. I should clean these before I came on. But blessings. So good to see all of you tonight. I really appreciate you coming on in. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube page, listen, what you waiting on? Go over to my YouTube page, type in Marvel Lewis or Walking Into Destiny. You will see my uh, Destiny page. Um, go on, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. A lot of people have been messaging me and let me know. Hey, listen, woman of God, I don't know when you come on live. Turn on the notification on YouTube and on Facebook. And once you turn on the notification, once I come on, you will get that notification and you will know when I'm on and so you won't miss a thing. And so tonight, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Tonight, I want to talk to you or actually, I just want to answer some questions some people have been sending to me. Um, I've been trying to make myself more available to you guys because a lot of people have been trying to uh, uh, reach me and a lot of people have been trying to call me and I keep on telling people hey listen I am a police officer I have a full time job I am a pastor <laughs> yes I know and I understand that responsibility I really do understand that responsibility but I am also a police officer and, and and to which I am obligated to also and so I I, I have to do my job and, and a lot of times uh, I, I, when I come from work and I do work shifts when I do come from work I am pretty much exhausted you know I try to get my kids ready cook something for them but I'm exhausted and many times I try to study the Word of God try to get into prayer and so um for me to remain uh, I wouldn't say pure, but for me to remain who I am, I got to be able to stay in the face of God. I won't be the prophet that you need me to be if I'm not in the face of God. I won't be the person that you need me to be if I'm constantly on the phone with people and, and, and not spending time with God. I wouldn't be able to answer the questions. I wouldn't be able to go before God on your behalf. I wouldn't be able to pray for you as I should if I don't spend time with God. I wouldn't be able to discern some spirits. I wouldn't be able to warn you of some things in our country some things that is happening around us if I don't stay in the face of God and so people I gotta stay in the face of God and so once I've completed my duty um, I come home sometimes I stay in the face of God sometimes I go to work and I'm fasting and so that in itself is a challenge and then uh, I come home and I'm still trying to do some fasting and praying studying and make sure in the Word of God and so people if you have a prophet leader you know a pastor and they're not staying in the face of God you need to watch that if they're constantly on the phone with you when when are they praying when 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 are you praying if you're constantly on the phone and even Facebook I gotta take time off from Facebook some of you keep on calling and asking and messaging woman of God you need to do Facebook more live you need to do more lives you need 
need to do more. Listen, I don't come on Facebook if it's not God's will. I may have a plan and I might say, okay, I'm going to do Bible study. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But listen, sometimes I do it out of, you know, a, 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 a kind place. I do it from a, a kind place. I, I say things from my heart. But if God say, uh -uh, I never tell you to do that, I got to I gotta back off. So if he tell me to stay off Facebook, I stay off Facebook. When he say, come on, I come on. I don't do this for people, although I do love people, I don't do it for people. And so, uh, people of God, I am here tonight to answer some of the questions that people have been sending me via um, my um, messenger on Walking Into Destiny Live. Listen, don't send me no message on the Marvel Lewis page. I don't go on the Marvel Lewis page. I really check uh, messages on the Marvel Lewis page. So if you really want to reach me, you have to reach me on the Walking Into Destiny Live page. That's the one that I usually check most because I know it's the ministry page. That's the one people will uh, reach me um, quicker on. That's the one people call me on. So you would reach me quicker on the Walking Into Destiny live page. Or you can email me, prophetessmarvelewis at gmail.com, any of your questions, and I will try my best to answer your questions. I don't know it all. And so what I don't know, I rely on the Holy Spirit. I question other people, more mature people in the faith. I would um, go and do some studies. I do not know it all. You may ask me a question and I can tell you if I don't know, I don't know. And um, I don't know who could kill me for that. But hey, if I don't know, I don't know. I don't profess to know it all, but I do. One of the things that I believe in is helping people and helping people to get uh, to their purpose and their destiny, hence the name of this um, ministry. And so it is something that was burdened out of my heart. It was something that God placed on the inside of me to cause people to realize their um, destiny. And so let's get into this. Some, some people ask me some questions um, on my Gmail, send me some message on um, email me some messages and some people in the um, um, mess me, um, send me some messages or some questions on messenger and so I just want to answer a few of them if I can quickly um, one of them I really need to go in depth in it and so I'm going to make it like a mini little teaching and then I'm going to move on to uh, some of the other questions I may not take questions while I am on Facebook live now um, mainly because I've been I put out the flyer I think a few days ago if you have any questions please do send them on my um, the walking into destiny live page the messenger page not on Facebook because some of your questions are very confidential so please not on Facebook but on the messenger app where I can see it I'm not going to call names I'm not going to give any of your personal information I'm just going to answer the questions uh, that you send me those of you on my YouTube page you can email me or you can send me your questions on um, my messenger um, page or you can send it to Marvel Lewis uh, prophetessmarvelewis at gmail.com I'm going to try my best to answer your questions. Say, hey, listen, don't send me no epistles. Don't send me no three-page letter. Don't send me a whole book. Listen, I, I, I am pretty busy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pretending. I am busy. I, I got a family. I am a pastor. I'm a prophet. I'm a police officer. I try to write a little bit. I try to do a little bit. You know, I try. I try. Uh, but I don't know it all, but please don't send those long three-page letters. Just get to the point. Let me know what your question is, and if I can help you, I will let you know if I can help you, and then I will do a teaching on it on Facebook so that we can all learn. We can all learn. I find that even sometimes when I open my mouth and speak, the Holy Spirit takes over, and, and the Holy Spirit begins to speak, so not only will you learn, I will learn also, I will be enlightened by the Holy Spirit also. And so uh, with that long introduction, let's get into it. Um, hey, you all like my new background? Do you all like it? Um, I don't do the Christmas tree thing. I haven't done it in a few years. I don't do the decorating thing anymore in a few years. When you read your Bible and you learn some things, you stop doing some things. But I don't um, kill anybody who celebrate Christmas. Say, hey, listen, do you, honey? Do you, boo? Um, but I got a little something, something here. I just wanted to change the background a little bit. I'm not done. I didn't want to come on live today because I'm really not done with everything that I'm trying to do. But I got a new little background. Uh, tried to get a little decoration. I was trying to find some shelves 
so I can, um, um, you know, decorate in here just a little bit, make it look a little different, you know what I mean? Instead of just the black, um, the black screen that you usually see me with. So I hope you guys like, you know, my little new little thingies. And then, of course, I love candles. I love scented candles. And so you would notice that I have my little scented candles. And then this is a candle that my sister gave me from, uh, was a Christmas gift, I think about two, three years ago. And as you can see, I never took it out the wrapper. I just love candles. And it stayed right there. But hey, let's get into it. And so the first thing I want to deal with this afternoon, thank you for coming on in. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Um, If you have not shared this as yet, please go and share the broadcast. I do appreciate all of you for coming on in. Thank you, Bianca Lewis. Thank you, Monica, for coming on in. Thank you, Nakisha Smith. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you for coming on in. Norma Penda, it is always good to see you. Um, Katrina Prescott, is that Prescott? Yes, Prescott. Well, blessings to all of you. Hey, Gandhi, how are you doing? Blessings to all of you. So blessed, Nelly. I'm so glad to have you on tonight. Um, blessings to all of you. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, not only do I have a new background and some new little goodies, I have a new haircut. You know, you know that you know the Bible scholars can come for me and the pastors them can come for me. I can't. Um, got my hair cut because I got tired of dealing with the hair. Plus, my sister gone back home, and so I wouldn't have nobody to weave my little hair in and put my little weave in. So I get it cut. I hope you all like it. If you all don't, it's okay. But anyway, let's get into it tonight. I want to talk about um, witchcraft in the workplace. Witchcraft in the workplace. Somebody sent me a question and they were dealing um, 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 with witchcraft in the workplace and they began to ask me some questions pertaining to witchcraft in the workplace. And so I want to do a mini little teaching. I don't think I can fit everything in it. But if you have your pens and papers, you know once Marvel come on, you got to have your pen and your paper. But if you don't have your pen and paper, go run, go get it now. Go get your notepad, go get your pen, go get your paper. And I have uh, probably about three or four scriptures I want to give to you. I want to give you, um, um, not definitions, but I want to give you some things that will help you to come back and to fight. I want to give you a little, some symptoms that you can look for. I want to give you um, um, some things that when you start to deal with witchcraft and the place to look for, so you may be able to understand and discern concern what you are dealing with and we're going to talk about a little bit about witchcraft in the workplace and let's go let's get it started let's get this party started right okay and so witchcraft in the workplace all of you new know now what is witchcraft a lot of people think witchcraft are people flying around on broomsticks and so forth and all that and they think these things don't happen anymore and um if i'm going too fast please let me know um they think that that these are witches flying on broomsticks and these things don't happen no more. And so the minute you talk about witchcraft, voodoo, Santa Mira, Santa Maria, Santa, what the word is, Santa Maria, whatever, Maria, San Gomez and witchcraft. The minute you start talking about these things, some people, especially religious people, they get like, oh, I don't believe in these things. The devil is a liar. And, you know, I plead the blood of Jesus, mom, sis, in order for you to do all these things. That means you have to have um, some understanding of the spiritual realm. And if you have some understanding of the spiritual realm, you will understand that God is a spirit. Satan is a spirit. Demons are spirits. Angels are spirits. And so if you believe in angels and you believe in God, if you believe there is a devil, if you believe that there is a God, then sweetie, you need to believe that there are witches. You need to believe that there is sorcery. You need to believe that there is voodoo. You need to believe these things. There's just as there is good in the world, there is also evil in the world. And so, people of God, this teaching tonight, Chantel, is that you? I think that's it. That's Chantel Bethel. Best blessings to you, honey. Um, but yes, these things are real. They happen. Listen, I pray and I hope that these things were not real, but these things are real. And for us, um, a lot of us with uh, the pigmented skin. Our ancestors came from a central location and because all of us came from one place, yes, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, the Trinidadians, Tobago, Tobago people, Trinidad and Tobago, yes, all of us came from one place. All of us, all of we in the Caribbean, we came from one place. Some parts of America, Louisiana and so forth, they ventured into those parts. All of us, of this race right here, we came from one place. And our ancestors believe in witchcraft or the spiritual realm or they believe in spirituality. 
And so therefore, a lot of us, we are seeped in this thing and many of us don't even know. Many of our forefathers, our foremothers, they would have dealt in these things. They would have dealt, um, um, dived into some of these things. And so now we are now dealing with the repercussions, not understanding why delay in marriage, um, no progress, anti-progress can't be successful in anything, can't keep your business open, can't get married, can't have children, barren, listen, a lot of things that we are dealing with is a symptom of what it is that our forefathers did. And so when you hear Christians especially say that they don't believe in this thing, listen, run away from them people because you can't believe in God and not believe in these things. But anyway, um, want to talk about when you encounter witchcraft in the workplace, just a little bit about witchcraft in the workplace. When you encounter witchcraft in the workplace, let me get my little thing here so I can put this little higher. You know I always need help seeing. So I'm going to put my Bible here and see if I can get this a little higher to eyesight level. You all can hear me properly? When you encounter witchcraft in the workplace, it can be for uh, many reasons. It can be for many reasons. The main reason that you may encounter witchcraft in your workplace, one of the main reasons. You all go ahead and share this broadcast. One of the main reasons that you may encounter witchcraft on um in your workplace in your work area the main one it's that this is not the only one but this is the main one jealousy jealousy is the driving force jealousy and envy jealousy is the driving force to witchcraft somebody see you they just don't like you can't stand your spirit can't stand you mind you they can't tell you why they don't like you you know they may see you progressing in your business they might see you getting married they might see you have children and they thinking that you have it all together and they not knowing them not knowing the struggles and the things that you went through to get to where you are now or to accomplish what you have accomplished they don't know what it is that you've been through but they are jealous jealous of probably you have a little lighter skin jealous of you know you know how you fix your little hair you get your little remy you know how to put your little you know suit together and so people think or they think that you have it all together or because you went and you got the degree you went to college you finished school you know a lot they jealous of all kind of things mind you the reason they may be jealous and they may be doing all kind of evil things against you but my whole thing is if you're trying to kill me for the house more than likely if I die or you kill me for the house, you still won't end up having it. And so um, the main reason you would find uh, witchcraft in the workplace is jealousy. That's one of the driving forces, uh, jealousy. As a result, a spirit, uh, as a result of jealousy that may be projected or sent at you, this spirit of, of the spirit, it comes with a lot of other spirits. Uh, some of the other spirits, it can come with the spirit of delay. It can be sent, amen, when you're dealing with witchcraft in the workplace and you're dealing with somebody, a co-worker or somebody that is jealous um, of you and, and what you are accomplishing and what you are doing or what they think you are capable of, um, uh, 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 listen, more than likely they will send, uh, uh, when you see they go at the, uh, to the witchcraft doctors, more than likely they will send a spirit of delay, amen, a spirit of delay can be sent. Uh, attached with it can be the spirit of procrastination. Uh, let me just stick a pen right there. A lot of times when you see you are tormented by a spirit or by a demon, that spirit or that demon doesn't usually come by itself. It is usually attached. Hey, Omiko, um, 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 Ambassador, how you doing, Pastor Clinton? Um, but you, you, these spirits are usually attached with other spirits. Amen. They are usually attached with other spirits. So when you find that somebody is going to send a spirit of delay at you, it's more than likely attached with other spirits. And so the spirit of the delay might be the, the, the main spirit or the, the high-ranking spirit. But there are some low-ranking spirits that are also attached to that spirit and so you would find now that somebody who's uh, 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 who's probably jealous of you in the work area and working witchcraft 
um, more than likely they're going to send a spirit of delay, meaning now that they want to stop you, they want to delay you, they want to hinder you from doing or progressing on your job so that they may appear to progress, amen? So they may appear to be going somewhere or doing something. And so accompanying the spirit of delay may be a spirit of uh, procrastination, uh, the spirit of fatigue, Come on, light bulbs should be going off in some people and right about now. The spirit of procrastination is attached to delay. The spirit of fatigue is attached to delay. Listen, infirmity can be attached to the delay although infirmity can be a high-ranking demon all by itself or a high-ranking spirit all by itself. But when this person or someone or the group of people decide to, 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 to send witchcraft at you, to stop you or to sidetrack you or to delay you, it usually comes with procrastination, fatigue, delusion. Come on, uh-huh. You thought you see something, but then when you look, that wasn't what you thought you saw. And so sometimes you're like, I could have swear to I just see. I could swear to somebody just passed. Me. I could have swear to what somebody just called me in some familiar. And so also with a sort of uh, uh, delusion, infirmity, fatigue, procrastination, uh, 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 and so many, and so many other spiritual implications, too many to name right uh, right about now in this teaching. Uh, some symptoms of witchcraft in the workplace. I want to give you some symptoms and some things where you'll be able to identify. Remember, I told you this is just a mini teaching of uh, rich craft, rich witchcraft in the workplace. Amen? Holy Spirit, I'm going to need you to help me with this tongue tonight. Symptoms can range from uh, demonic dreams. Song familiar? Um, some symptoms of somebody working witchcraft on you or that you are under uh, attack by demons or uh, negative energy being sent at you. Some people choose to call it negative energy. Witchcraft, it all is the same. Um, some symptoms of that is uh, demonic, um, um, demonic dreams. Demonic dreams of attacks. When you start seeing, uh, 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 dem when you start having these perverse dreams, when you start having these demonic dreams, when you start having these weird dreams, dreams that you can't even seem to, you can't even seem to explain dreams like, like where did that come from? That was left. I don't understand that. Dreams of demonic dreams of attack. Uh, demonic dream, demonic agents sent to forge covenants. Man, and this is a teaching all by itself. I can preach now on that for about a good year. Demonic agents sent to forge covenants with you. Plenty of you, while you are dreaming, you may be dreaming of having sexual intercourse with somebody. You may be dreaming of kissing someone. You may be dreaming of getting married. And a lot of us, when we dream, we're getting married. We're like, oh, yes, thank you, Jesus. He's going to send my husband. He's going to send my wife. Listen, get up quick and cancel that dream. All that means is that you are forging a covenant or coming into an agreement with an evil entity or an evil spirit. Come on, somebody. All that means is that you just came into agreement for your own demise. The person who is working against you, that person who is erecting an evil altar against you, when you now kiss that person, shake that person and accept the money from them, or you in, um, open your house door and let them in, or you dream that you were marrying them, it, may, it meant now that you came into a demonic agreement with that person. Meaning now you just came into covenant with that demon, that, that, uh, that, that demonic agent that was sent now to accomplish something, which was now to form a covenant with you in order for whatever is being projected at you for it to be able to manifest. You got to understand when something is, when somebody want a uh, evil practitioner want to do something to you or want to project evil upon you, what they first do is they go in the spiritual realm and they tie this thing up in the spiritual realm and then that thing will manifest in the physical realm. But the only way this thing is going to manifest in the physical realm is if you, the human host, came into agreement with it. And so this is the reason why it's so important 
for us now when you have these demonic dreams or these dreams of coming into a covenant with demonic entities because that's all they are i don't care if the person was fine i don't care if the sister was like pow pow pow, pow. i don't care if you that was your husband i don't care if it was your girlfriend your fiance i don't care if that was your wife listen in the dream that is not who you think it is they are monitoring agents and they are sent to forge evil covenants with you in order for them to move in the earth come on i don't want to get ahead of myself symptoms range from uh demonic dreams of attacks demonic um agents sent to forge covenant with you as to have um your agreement in your own demise because spirits don't have a because spirits don't have legal rights in the earth they will always seek an agreement from a human host to carry out their demonic agendas in the earth we have to understand now and i really don't want to get into all of this in order for spirits to be able now God never gave a legal authority to spirits to be able to uh, 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 move and work and maneuver on the earth. Although they can move and, 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 and go from one place to another, but in order to, 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 to uh, uh, in order, like say for instance, this job that I have here, this decoration job, me as a human being, I can pick up this job and I can move this job. But a spiritual uh, entity cannot pick up this jar and move this jar because they were not given the legal access to. The, own, the way that you know something was given legal access is that they have flesh, human body. And so once you are a human, it means that, that you have legal access to roam about the country, to roam about the earth. Amen? But a spirit was not given that authority. And that is the reason why we have authority over spirits. Come on, somebody. I need you all to stick with me for a few minutes. And so, therefore, because a human has legal authority to move things in the earth wherever they need it to go, a spirit that does not have a legal authority needs to come into agreement with a human human host in order for them to possess that person to have them as a puppet to do what they want them to do and this is what evil practitioners do come on somebody i need y'all to stick with me and so we need to understand people of god in order for spirits or demons uh, to, 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 to have that access or to be able to cause things to manifest from the spiritual to the physical realm they need an agreement and so therefore if you have a negative dream or a demonic dream wake up and cancel it if you have to fast because some of these things you have to fast for fast and break the body let's move on other symptoms include um items or personal items disappearing and reappearing we're talking about witchcraft in the workplace if you have items that you had at work, you had like, uh, say for instance, I have these little um, balls here, these little ornaments, this little thing that I um, um, got here. And listen, this is so beautiful and cute. This is nice. And I have some balls in here. And uh, you have, you know, say for instance, you have um, 20 balls in here. And you know you have 20 balls in here. Left 20 balls in here on your desk at work. But you went um, to the bathroom or you went home and you was off for the day or you went on vacation for a week and you came back, but it's only five balls left. And you're trying to figure out, but hold on, wait, I know I left more balls inside this container. Why is it that I, I left about 20 balls in this container? Why is it that I only have five left or they're very slick? You left 20 there and they take one and they leave 19 and you're trying to figure out why, why this is happening or perhaps you come um, to work and you meet some things in your at your workstation that you know you didn't leave there. You met some kind of candy, you met some kind of wrapper, um, some kind of cloth or material, and you're trying to figure out, like, listen, I don't recall leaving this thing here at my workstation. You come into your business, your beauty salon, your, your law firm, you come in to open the door, and you realize these funny plants in front of your door or some stuff that just wasn't there, you know, some a dead bird. Listen, where, where does dead bird come from? When you see some items that are disappearing or appearing, uh, 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 
are in your workspace or your workstation or work area or your business, you know that you are dealing with um, um, a, a demonic fight or witchcraft in the workplace. Amen. And so you have to look at those things very carefully when you have items that are disappearing and appearing. Amen. Uh, being in your workplace or workstation or properties come on somebody when you buy a piece of property and you uh, uh go and you tell Susie and you tell Jack listen I just buy a piece of property up the road you know tree house down yeah what you gonna tell them all your business for because now they're going right on that same property three doors down from Jack and they're gonna throw some stuff on the property in order for you not to progress in order for you not to finish your home in order for you not to even lay a black block or even get to the foundation listen sometimes it's just best for you to keep your more close until you can just get things sorted out amen and so we have to be careful of things that are disappearing and reappearing at our workplace these are some of the symptoms you can look for when you feel like you know what something ain't right here when you notice these type of things you know you are dealing with some witchcraft in the workplace amen uh some other symptoms you can see is foul sense foul sense when i say foul sense s c e n t s Foul scents, like foul smell. Something smell horrible, smell stink. Um, this is an odor. It's horrible. Something that you ain't used to smelling either at your desk. And you looking in the garbage, you looking in the fridge. Maybe you left your um, lunch um, last week over the weekend and probably forgot it and didn't throw the garbage. Or you probably forgot, you know, some food or a piece of fruit in your drawer. And you looking on about thinking, mother sick, I probably left something that spoiled. Listen, you ain't leave nothing spoiled. You don't clean the garbage. You don't clean your desk. You don't sweep the whole house. You don't clean off the property. You don't do all these things, but you can't figure out where this foul scent is coming from. More than likely, it's from a uh, demonic agent, sent by a demonic agent. Another symptom that you can look at when you're dealing with witchcraft in the workplace is hearing weird, weird sounds. Hearing sounds that nobody else can hear. You hearing somebody call your name and you answering like, hey, and then everybody looking at you like, girl, what happened to you? Hey, so nobody calling your name. Uh, uh, hearing weird sounds. Asking everybody, did you hear like a door slam, or did you hear something scraping across the wall? Did you hear something in the ceiling? Nobody else hearing these sounds except you. Listen, witchcraft in the workplace. These are some of the um symptoms. Amen. Uh, another symptom that you can look at uh is being sick. When you feel bad, only when you come to work. When you are home, you are fine. Everything is fine. Your body is fine. But the minute you get to work, listen, headaches, back aches, stomach pain, feeling nauseous. You always want to throw up. Something ju it ju You just feel sick every time you get to work. Dizziness. Come on. All kind of things happening. Remember now I talk about the... the, 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 the uh, are spirits that can come in a spirit of delay and when this spirit of delay come it brings in all kind of other spirits with it and one of those spirits is infirmity and so you would find now that you you get to your workplace or you get to your property or you get to your business and you find that man listen i don't feel good i really don't feel good you got a report sick or you can't come into work today or you you know telling your employees man listen i gotta take the this this day off you know because uh, something right here and so you have where you will have symptoms of being sick you would go to the doctor make checks with the doctor check your high blood pressure check your cholesterol your mri cat scan everything and the doctor won't be able to find anything why because it is spiritual uh, attacks happening at your workplace nowhere else you feel sick except for work amen and so you know this is one of those symptoms of witchcraft in the workplace and those are some of the things that i wanted to share with you as uh spiritual symptoms or or symptoms that you can look at when you are dealing with witchcraft in um uh, the workplace dreams of co-workers chasing you or attacking you when you begin to have dreams, listen, that's just God saying to you, listen, since you couldn't get it when I send the other dream, you couldn't get it when I send the prophet, you didn't get it when, you know, your daughter tell you, mommy, I see something in right here, so, daddy, I, so, I saw your co-worker doing this, you didn't get it. But he had to give you this dream clear and plain and simple. When you see your co-workers chasing you,
or you see people with the same uh, say for instance you work in a company the way you wear uniform you seeing people but you can't see their face but you can see people in the uniform where you work chasing you attacking you or they giving you something to eat come on people all of that is a uh, witchcraft in the workplace amen god is showing you or saying to you listen wake up something is wrong uh, another symptom you can look at is changes in your colleagues and changes in your boss's attitude when you notice that all of a sudden everybody started acting funny um, um everybody was talking but as soon as you come in the room everybody be quiet or you notice that your boss or your supervisor that loved you all of a sudden can't stand you anymore they to the point like they just inches away from firing you from your job come on somebody and so um at changes in the attitude of your colleagues and your boss attitude towards you unexplained job loss or pay cuts when you notice you want a job and then all of a sudden there's unexplained unexplainable pay cuts like say for instance your cash up and wendy is breaking kfc or your cash at your business establishment or your cash a cashier um somewhere and for some reason money is just keep on disappearing but you know all day you was taking the correct amount of money from people and giving the uh, correct amount of change you mind man you even was using your calculator and for some reason at the end of the day you're still coming up short your draw still coming up short and so um 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 pay cuts when you gotta make that your boss had to take money out of your salary or you gotta um um some jobs where you are punished and they gotta take money out of your salary or when you are reprimanded they gotta take money off your salary and so you would find pay cuts or you would find where because you was late you know things happening to cause you to be late they say hey listen we can have to deduct money out of your salary and so when you see an unexplainable pay cuts come on somebody or when you go and pick up your salary and you know you work overtime but yet the monies are not there on your salary or when you just show up to work you're doing everything that you're supposed to do and all of a sudden they tell you they gotta let you go you lose your job got fired for un an unexplained reason cannot be explained your boss can't even explain to you why he's firing you why she's letting you go your supervisor manager can't explain to you why they are firing you all of these are witchcraft symptoms of witchcraft in the workplace these are some of the things that you need to look for and so let's go to the part where how do you fight against these things how do you fight back the way that you would fight back two things and you all ain't gonna like it prayer and fasting go ahead share this broadcast with somebody somebody need to hear this tonight how do you fight the spiritual witchcraft no you don't fight um physically no you don't go say yes i know susie she never did like me on this job i gotta wait till the, till, till the end of the day for me to meet her in the back of the alley and just punch her in her face no that's not the way that you're going to fight no i can't wait till i see jack have to work boy i can punch him man i know the bar that jack usually go to and i know he just cost me to get fired boy i know him no you fight in the physical realm you will never see any changes will never see any improvement you have to fight spiritually and so you have to, to fight by prayer and fasting i want to take you now to uh, uh matthew chapter 17 and 21 matthew chapter 17 and 21 it says how be it this kind goes goeth not out but by prayer and fasting and so what matthew was saying here jesus is talking to his disciples and this and the background of the story is his disciples was trying to cast out a demon over someone and they couldn't get the demon out and so uh jesus said to them hey listen 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 y'all can't be coming around here and y'all ain't fasted up y'all ain't prayed up y'all ain't fasted fasted and taking that y'all could go up against these high-ranking demons and think y'all can be successful it don't work like that and so what happened is Jesus began to explain to them, listen, these kind ran in here, which you all do, what you all trying to come up against, they, these kind could only come out by prayer and fasting. And so Jesus began to explain to his disciples, listen, you're going to have to come, you're going to have to fight this one 
by prayer and fasting. You can't fight it physically. You can't fight this by just prayer alone. Man, listen, I don't care how eloquent your words are. I don't care how much of a big words you can use. I don't care how much you can, man, listen, you can be a, a, the greatest speaker ever. Your prayer alone will not work against these high-ranking demons. Your prayers alone will not be able to get you out of that covenant. Your prayers alone will not be able to break the are, are, are stubborn covenants that you may have forged in some way or another or by uh, 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 your parents or forefathers forging covenants with um, 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 evil practitioners and demons and so forth and so you're going to have to go way deeper you're going to dig way deeper you have to do a little bit more and so jesus explained to them in matthew chapter 17 and 21 listen these kind only come out by prayer and fasting and when jesus said to them these kind uh jesus was meaning uh stronger demons when jesus said these kind you have to understand that he wasn't talking about those little simple demons he wasn't talking about those little stomach pain little mal and you can say in the name of Jesus, I command this headache to go. No, uh -uh. he was talking about the high ranking demons. He was talking about the big head on Joe's. He was talking about the big timers. He was talking about the big, the big corners. That's who he was talking about. He wasn't talking about those low level demons that when you just sneeze, they run. No, uh uh. He talking about the big, the big boys. Come on. And so he said, these kind, and I want you to understand when Jesus said these kind, he didn't just mean one that was a plural statement meaning that these are more than one and not only are they more than one they are very strong and so you can't come against no high ranking demon or you can't come against these um, higher level demons you can't come against these upper level demons with no lil in the name of jesus you gotta go no it won't work you got to be able to come back and to fight against these demons uh, uh, with prayer and fasting. Amen? Number two, uh, another thing that you could do to fight or to combat spiritual wickedness or witchcraft in the workplace, search yourself. Search yourself for any sin. And this is the one nobody want to hear because everybody think they're perfect. Everybody think like, child, who me? I ain't had sex in eight years. Child, who me? Mm -mm, child, my husband been dead for 20 years and I ain't touching and bother nobody. Child, who me? Girl, I don't, I don't cross it. I don't talk with people. Who you mean me? Boy, I don't drink. I stopped drinking long time. I stopped sweet a long time. And you think like, okay, yeah, I, I ain't need to do all of this. But you need to search yourself, sir, mom, brother, sister, friend, search yourself. Because a lot of time we going around thinking that we are perfect, thinking that everything is all right. But there are some underlying issues that we refuse to target or we refuse to put on the table that is hindering or keeping us uh, from receiving what God has for us. Or it is opening the door and allowing the enemy to have a footstool, allowing the enemy to have one step, um, 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 be one step ahead of you. Listen, people of God, you got to be able to search yourself, search your heart, ask God to uh, shine a light at your heart. So that you may be able to see what it is that you need to deal with. Ask God to cut you open. Listen, it won't feel good. It will not feel good. But you need to ask God to cut you open. Lay you open on the operating table. And take out everything that is not of him. Ask God to reveal those secret sin. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you things that you may have been keeping in. Things like um uh, uh, unforgiveness. Things like envy. Things like jealousy. These are things that you can't physically see. You can't physically put your hands on them. But these are battles of the heart. These are spiritual and inward things. These are the things that are going to keep us from getting into heaven. These are the things that are going to keep us from being successful in the earth. These are the things that are keeping us from the blessings that God promised us in the book of Deuteronomy. He says, these blessings I have for you. And listen, he had these things even before you was formed in your mother's belly. He had these blessings for you. And so if you continue 
in you to remain in your sin, not wanting to deal with it. Ignorance is no excuse. You got to ask God to search. You got to ask God to show you these things. And you got to begin now to deal with you. And so uh, there's a scripture in the Bible that say the, the, uh, the, um, um, say the curse without a cause cannot, you know, some that scripture. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in the Bible. I read it a million times. I just don't remember. But um, it, 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 the, the curse without a cause, it cannot have an effect. It can't, it can't, it can't stick. But if there is something there for it to stick, it will stick. If the door is open, it will stick. If you are a husband and you are mistreating your wife, sir, let me tell you something. Your prayers are not being answered. Man, let me tell you, let me take off my glasses. If you are a husband and you are mistreating your wife and you're trying to figure out why you can't get this promotion, why your business can't move, why it seems as if everything's slowed down in your life. You know what happened? Because God turning a deaf ear to your prayers. If you are mistreating your husband, your wife, if you are, are disrespecting your wife, not listening to her, not not catering to her spiritually, physically, and emotionally. Listen, God ain't hearing your wife if you're not taking care of your husband. If you are not taking care of him physically, mentally, spiritually. If you're not doing what you're supposed to do as a wife. Let me tell you, your prayers will be hindered. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how much you fight. I don't care how much you put on your long skirt and your crucifix and carry around your Bible. Can I tell you that nothing, absolutely nothing will happen to you? And so for us, we like to take this marriage thing. Oh, I want to get married because some of us, we so, we, we, we want to have sex so bad that we, we, we want to get married. We can't stay single for a year. We can't stay, stay single for five years. We think we dead if we go two years without having sex. And yeah, I can be real tonight. Tell the children go to bed. We think we dead or we, I can die if I don't have sex in two years. I'm going to die, God. I can't make it. And so you, you say, okay, let me go marry the, the first fella that come around. Let me go and marry the first girl come around. The body look good. She looked a little good. But you didn't know she was crazy in the head. You're going to marry her and now you're in the house with, the, with sister girl. Sister girl body look good, but her mind ain't good. She ain't right with God. And so now she's giving you all kind of trouble in the house and you're trying to figure out what I get myself into. And so now you start mistreating the woman, but that's your wife now. Oh, you ain't gonna have sex with him now, but that's your husband now. Yeah, uh-huh, this thing go deep. And so now you go into work and then um, 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 Susie Q them and, 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 and Jackie them and, you know, John, and Tom them. They, they, they able now to do what they can do. Why? Because the door open. You can't pray like you want to because you worrying about hubby. You can't fast like you want to because you worrying about wifey. You ain't doing what you're supposed to do home. Our wifey came and talked to you and say, hubby, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I think God, you know, lead me here. Huh? I'm into that. Uh, 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 what you talking about God? I, if God? Me and God ain't mad. If God tell you that, he can tell me that too. But you ain't never think that probably God spoke to your wife and didn't speak to you. Probably because he wanted you to humble yourself and listen to your wife. And vice versa, probably um, um wife, your, your God didn't talk to you because he spoke to your husband because he wants you to humble yourself and listen to your husband and be submissive. Could you, did you ever thought, thought about that part? And so people of God, search yourself. Search yourself. Find out what you have or what's going on in you. It may, it may not be jealousy. It may not be envy. It may be hurt. Who are you talking to? It may be hurt. It may be that you was molested as a child. It may be even as an adult, somebody rape you, somebody hurt you, and you take that thing to heart. That thing of you broken. And so you can't even heal. God can't even move in your life. Why? Because you're broken. And so that gives grounds to the enemy now to just come in and just play. And just play. You know what? I spend too much time on this. Let me move on. Um, 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 jealousy, uh, lust, which is a big one. Witchcraft. If you're going and you're dabbling it, boy, these people working witchcraft on me. I go in by um sister up the road, and I go in by sis um, um brother up the road, and I go in by the spiritualists, and I go and put something on them too, cause they put something on me. I go and go work out something because they 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 attack me first. And so I going down by Jake up the road, down through the corner, up through the alley, down through the bush and the shack down the road. I going to go see him because I know he could deal about this. I'm going to see him because I know he could deal with this little situation here. 
But some mom, you're supposed to be a Christian son. You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be saved. And fulfilled with the Holy Spirit. It probably was in the Spirit of God. And so now you're going and dabble in witchcraft. And so you take taking on that God supposed to come true for you now. Or perhaps you were one that used to work witchcraft on people. And then you say, you know what? I tired of this crap. You buck your toe and say, okay, you know what? This thing ain't working. You get saved. And now you think that everything is fine. No, sister, you got to repent. You got to renounce. And all the people you done work witchcraft on when you was in the world, you got to go now and ask for forgiveness. You got to tell God. You got to ask God, listen, God, forgive me. I was wrong. It was me. I did it. You got to renounce and you got to let it go. So you got to search yourself. This is how you fight back witchcraft. Plenty of you, you're not progressing. And the reason why you're not progressing is because you still have things that you're dealing with inside. And so the enemy still have a foot. He still can get in. The door still open. He had a little thing with um, um anybody home with the door crack. Mm -hmm. Some of your doors crack wide open. Let's move on. Witchcraft. Horoscopes. <laughs> Horoscope psychics reading the stars, tarot cards, and all these things are witchcraft. Those are the Facebook games that y'all be playing, and, and, and how much children will I have in the future, and who I can marry in the future. Where, where are Facebook getting this information from? Huh? And y'all right there, accurate. That's so mean. How much children you can have in the future? Or, or, or what do I look like? What I can look like in 20 years? All these things, witchcraft and sorcery people. The, the enemy is so cunning. The enemy is have these things. So, man, listen, he's so tricky. He could just have these things. And we right here, we like, oh, that's nothing, man. That's just a game. I need to be so super religious. I ain't telling you to be super religious. I'm telling you to go get yourself some discernment. Because the reason why you can't progress is because you're dabbling in sorcery. That's what I just said. Sorcery. You're reading the horoscope to see what kind of life you can have and who um, um what can happen to you today and how you're dating. Listen, it's sorcery. You're calling the psychic hotline to know if you can get married. It's sorcery. Let me move on. Idolatry, meaning that you were worshiping everything except God. Then you put it for God. Idolatry, where it's actually in the face, even your little Bible. Yeah, because you are some people that carry the Bible and clutch it to their heart. They ain't never read it yet, but they have it right here. Yes, idolatry. That's what I just said. Idolatry. And you have your little, um, um, your little money, your little car, your house. You hold that in high esteem. Some of y'all worship people, some prophets and some prophetess and, and some pastors. Mm -hmm. Yes, I said it. You have them at high esteem. We're only people. We're not God. Let's move on. Adultery. Two words that sound alike but are very different. Adultery means when you're married and you're going out and keep sweetheart. The Hamians, we call it sweetheart. Mm. For Americans on my line, that's when you go and you have an affair. God ain't here in your press. And so anything that anyone is doing against you, it's going to work. Why? Because the door is open. Let's move on. I wasn't trying to make this long, but it turned out to be long. Number three, you want to repent. Repent, renounce. Ask God for forgiveness. Simple. Bam. To the point. Period. Repent. Renounce your sins. Ask God for forgiveness. That one done. Number four. Do not render evil for evil. You can find that and I don't even think I want to even go and read that. First Peter chapter 3 and verses 9. Do not render or repay evil with evil. Also see Romans chapter 12 verses uh, 17 to 21. I hope somebody writing that down. First Peter chapter 3 and verses 9. 
And also you can see Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 21. Do not render evil for evil. I just laugh at Christians who I hear, I hear as we pray the prayer. I send it back to send now. Don't laugh because I used don't don't laugh quick because I used to say it too. So I used to I laugh at myself. I used to say these crazy things too. I send it back to send now. That time I gonna pull out my ear in the bathroom because them witchcraft used to be listen boy listen the people used to be lighting some fire up my hip. When I say lighting fire, listen let me tell you. One night in the bathroom I wanted to pull out all my ear. I go on and sit in the barber chair. This was about two, two and a half years ago. I've been in Exoma for about a year, 18 months. So this was about like, say, two, two years ago. Them people had, listen, them people had me on fire. Do you get me? And these, the Christians, the pastors, them. Yeah, them. Mm -hmm. It was them. Then people have me on fire up with witchcraft. I go on in the barber chair and I say, cut it all off. Please cut it off. I can't take it no more. Cut, cut, cut it all off. And people thought I cut my hair off because I just wanted to be cute. No, that, that was just, I can't take no more, Jesus. And so people will look at you and try, how you get to be prophet? How you get, oh, I've been true for this. I've been true for this. Do not render evil for evil. And so I was sitting down. I sent it back to sender. I sent it back to sender. I sent it back to sender. Yeah, you sent it back to sender. You know what you're doing? You're taking part in the same thing the people doing to you. Hey, Shanna. The same thing the people did to you. You turning around. You sending it back to them. You know what they can do? Do a stronger little potion and send it right back to you. And what you can do? Go right there. I sent it back to sender. So y'all can be playing catch and, you know. Throw and catch every day. That's all y'all gonna be doing. You taking part in the same thing, ma'am, sir. That's the reason why you're not progressing. That's the reason why witchcraft can have an effect on you. Because you saying now, the same people who send in the witchcraft against you, when they send it to you, you saying now, send it back to sender. So you taking part in the same thing. You can't render evil for evil. You can't say, okay, they work, work witchcraft on me first. Now I go into the witch doctor to work witchcraft on them first. They sleep with my husband first, so I go and go sleep with their husband. They kill my cat, so I can kill their dog. Do not render evil for evil. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 21. 1 Peter 3 and 9. Um, chapter 3 and verses 9. Send back to sender prayers are wicked, demonic, and evil. Number five, do good instead of evil. Proverbs uh, 25 and 22 will tell you to heap coals on their head. And I'm just about done. Heap coals on their head. When you when they listen, <laughs> I want to say some things, but some people is watching me so I have to behave. <laughs> when, when, when they want to do wickedness and evil, no, you be nice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Would that be all? That's all you need me to do? Okay. All right. Can I get anything else for you? You sure? Okay. All right. How was your day today? Seriously? How was your children? Wow. That time they're looking at you like, something got to be wrong with this. Oh, no, I know what you say. I heard what you said. I know what you did. But that don't mean that I'm going to render evil for evil. The word of God says, vengeance is not mine. It's the Lord's. I watch God do some things. I watch God avenge me. I watch God do some things and I turn around and cry and say, God, please have mercy. Let me tell you something. Chantel, I watch God do some things for me. I watch God remove some situations. I turn around and I cry. You hear me? Real tears. Cry. And say, God, please have mercy. God said, no, because I told you I wouldn't deal with it. I told them to take their mouth off of you. I, I see God avenge some people. Me, mm-hmm, mama. I cry and I say, God, have, some, have mercy. God say, no, they shouldn't have touched my anointing. Because they don't look like nobody. Because they don't sound like the big time.
Alzheimer's, they thought that that's not my anointing. I see they do some things to some people. I want to go and lick them. It is everything about them. That's God. And I start praying, so God have mercy. God, don't this. God have mercy. God say, ah, take him out off. Don't you pray. That's me. That's my judgment. Keep your mouth shut. That's my judgment. Don't render evil for evil. Instead, he calls on the head. Bless those that curse you and, dis and, and dis despitefully use you. Luke chapter 6 and 28. Matthew chapter 5, verses 4. I just write so bad. I think this chapter, the verses um, um, 5 and, 40, and verses 43 to 47. That's what I think it is. Jesus, I just write back. Luke chapter 6, verses 28, and Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 47. Bonus. Let me give you this, and I'm done. Deuteronomy 28 and 2. Read the whole chapter. Deuteronomy 28 speaks about the blessings that shall come upon you when you follow the laws of God. And so people of God, Deuteronomy chapter 28, go and read it. Go and read Deuteronomy. It talks about the curses and it talks about the blessings. And so if you follow the laws of God, the blessings, they got to come. I'm telling you. They see no if, they see no and. It shall, it will. The blessings of the Lord will run you down, take you over. The blessings of the Lord will be way ahead of you. And before you get there, it will be right there sitting on you. I can tell you, when I left Abaco, the blessings of the Lord was waiting for me in Exoma. I did not have, I did not have to wait on it and tap down and say, God, where it is. No, it was waiting on me. So the blessings of the Lord will find you wherever you are. It will locate you. You ain't got to tell God, God, where the husband, God, where the wife, God, where the finances, how I can pay this mortgage. No, follow the laws and it will locate you. I don't come and tell nobody, so no seed. And I don't tell nobody, come and tithe and, and all of this foolishness. No, I don't do that. For what? I come and I work for my daddy. He can pay me. I work for my father. I work for Yahweh. I do what he tell me to do. I feed his sheep. I don't need to manipulate nobody. I don't need to lie to nobody. I don't need to proffer lie to nobody. I don't play them games. And I don't have no crystal balls to come up with no lies to tell you if you saying you saw it. Uh-uh, not this one. Do good. Follow the laws of God. Follow the laws of Yahweh. And the blessings will overtake you. Deuteronomy 28. You, you could go ahead and read it. And I'm done with that teaching. I said I was going to do a small teaching that turned into a big teaching. Bless the Lord anyway. <laughs> Bless the Lord anyway. Thank you all for listening. A few questions I want to um, answer. That was one of them. And I really needed to do that teaching because boy, Plenty of people dealing with witchcraft in the in the workplace. Listen, this fly won't leave me alone. This fly won't leave me alone. And if anybody know me, you all know I hate flies. I hate flies. Only one fly. Listen, a lot of people message me right to witchcraft. A lot. I dealt with it, so I know it's real. I know people who dealt with it. People in my family dealt with it. I know people, co-workers that deal with it. I know friends that deal with it. It's real. It happens. But well, we got to stay covered. You got to stay fasted. You got to pray. You got to be in repentance. You got to renounce. You got to stay fully covered under the blood of Jesus. Somebody asked me a question, and I hope that they are watching. Somebody asked me a question. How do you know what is your purpose? Listen, I didn't answer this question, I think, a million times on my Facebook page and on YouTube. Because purpose is my big thing. That is all that I teach. That is all that I want to see for people. I want to see people walking in their destiny. I want to see people walking in their purpose. And so this is all that I teach. If you don't know what your purpose is, if you don't know how to find your purpose, if you don't know how to locate your purpose, sweetie, honey, brother, friend, listen, go on YouTube. Pull up most of my videos. As a matter of fact, what I will do is I will go on YouTube and I will put the link in the comment section on YouTube and on Facebook. That's all I got to say about that. Your purpose is something. 
It is not a selfish thing. It's something that you do almost every day. It is something that 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 uh, uh, it, it's attractive to you no matter what you do. Um, when I came to Exoma, um, a lot of people is like, you you, you the cook, you just bake. I'm like, ah, I, I dabble, you know. And, and people when I cook, when I cook something for my cousin, like, man, you need to stop selling this man. And I'm like, ah. I am my cousin now. Look, she on the line. I'm gonna say, mother, you need to start selling these things. And I'm like. I ain't, I ain't interested. I really ain't interested. Listen, your purpose will knock you down trying to get you. Your purpose is something that you more than likely is do every day. A lot of people are like, Mama, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what God called me to do, what I'm supposed to do. Listen, your purpose may be to open a soup kitchen. Your purpose may be going to cook 10 breakfasts a day and carrying it by the school. Your purpose may be to speak to the children. Your purpose may be by going to the clinic and just handing out tracts. Your purpose may be going to, to the old folks' home and just chit-chatting with the people. Your purpose may be to be on a grandstand, to be some... Um, I'm speaking to uh, thousands of people who just as well as your purpose may be just to sit down in a classroom and talk to 30 people listen your purpose you more than likely already doing it a lot of people when, when they when they talk to me and I sit down and I talk to a lot of people and they say listen I don't know what my purpose is and when they begin to speak to me I say guess what your purpose is bam right there because you've been doing it more than likely a lot of people who say they don't know what their purpose is they have been doing it their whole life because it is your passion your purpose is something that you 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 are passionate about it, your, your purpose may be to be in politics because boy everything these people doing it making you mad and in your mind you say i would do this i could do this i would do that they should have this and they should have that well that maybe your purpose maybe you may be you you're calling this in politics maybe it may not be full or frontline politics maybe it might be as an advisor maybe it may be as a spiritual advisor you never know but your purpose is more than likely something that you do every day and so i will put the links for the videos of the many teaching that i did on purpose how to find your purpose as a matter of fact i'm writing a book it's called the three p's and purpose is one of the p's and so that should be out shortly you can look out for that your purpose is something that you you should you you probably doing already. Another person messaged me and asked me the question. Let me tell you something. I ain't trying to be rude and I ain't trying to be disrespectful, but I ain't no psychic. I'm not a psychic. I'm a prophet of Jehovah. Not a psychic. I don't hold no crystal ball and rub it. And see what's what's your what your future is. I don't do that. And so, if you have a question uh, pertaining to God, if you have a prote pre pre um, question pertaining, listen, almost anything. But don't. How can I say this? Don't don't tell me I won't get married. Do you see when I'm going to get married? Who I'm going to get married to? Oh, I look like God to you. get married to i can't even tell you if you can get married if the holy spirit don't talk to me i can't talk to you if god didn't say share with me and say marriage is in your future i cannot say it i don't know how much times you all want me to say this i am not a psychic only psychics can rub a ball and lie to you or go in illegally in the spiritual realm and pick out some things and give it to you not me. I enter in the legal way. I go to God. And if he say nay, no. If he say yay, yes. That's it. If you are married to, it's another question that was sent in. And I'm very careful how I answer this question. Like I said to you guys, I don't know it all. I was married before. It wasn't for a long period of time. I am now divorced. I, I don't pr pretend and I don't act like I know everything. Um, when it comes to marriage, I try not to get into people's business when it get into marriage because I am not married. And so what you may be going through, I may not understand. Although I was married before, 
my situation may differ from your situation and so what i dealt with may not be what you're dealing with and my experiences may not be your experiences but um i can speak from the holy spirit if he permits me to um but if you've been in a marriage and you've been in a marriage for about 25 30 years and for the whole time you was in the marriage as a matter of fact before you got married you knew god didn't send you there and for me when i got married i know god that was not of god i know he didn't send me there and so when I get in it, I knew from the beginning that it was not of God. I, I, I knew it wasn't. I say God say. That's what I said. I own up to my, my, I said it. I own it up. I say God say. God didn't tell me nothing. God didn't say, Mama, that's your husband. I asked him and he never showed me anything. He didn't show me no dream. He didn't say prophesy to me. He didn't send no prophet. Or listen, I gone there by myself. It wasn't no God. But to make me feel good, I say, well, I, I, I think it's of God. That's to make Mother feel good. That's to make this flesh feel good. But that wasn't God. And so um, a lot of times we enter into marriage and we know it was never of God. We know it wasn't God. I'm not talking about people who got married and they wasn't saved. Two people who got married and they wasn't saved. Listen, that's another case altogether, and I ain't even trying to get in that. But if you were a saved man, and you were a saved woman, and you got married, and you know that wasn't the person that God tell you to get married to, you knew. From before you got married, you knew. Okay? That's the scenario here. And five years later, 15 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, you've been struggling with this person, struggling in this relationship. Why? It was never of God. Although marriage is an honorable thing, if the man is trying and the woman is trying, God will honor the marriage because he honors marriage. He honors covenant. But that does not mean that's the person that he ordained for you. There's something called the permissive will of God and there's something else where that is the ordained. That does, that's just the word of God. When God says, bam, that's it. That's him. And then there's some things where he's like, but man, so you, you want it so bad, go get it. Here, take it, go, go. When you buck your head, I can be right here waiting on you. That's the permissive will of God. Like, okay, you've been nagging, but this, here, go. You know, many of us, when we go to our mommy, 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 I want the candy, please, 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 please. Or mommy, can I go with my friends? The mommy don't say no, you know, daddy don't say no. Please, 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 please. And then you, you go away. But that wasn't what they wanted you to do. And so for many of us, we fall into that category. And so what is happening now, you've been dealing with um, abuse for the past, you know, few years. Abuse, um, 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 uh, uh, verbal abuse, um, neglect, um, sweethearting, cheating, many of us. Um, my advice for somebody that is dealing with a situation where you got married to somebody that you know was not your husband, if you if you are saved and he is not saved, or if let me not say he, if one spouse is saved and you are the saved person and you married that person and you know you shouldn't have married that person, ain't nothing you could do for that right now. If that person ain't abusing you, when I say abusing you, hitting you physically, hitting you, threatening to kill you choking you punching you kicking you you in that sweetie that's your marriage that's yours if you are a christian now and i mean a real christian i mean the jokey fly by night fly by night christian i mean a real one and you married someone and that person isn't safe or they are safe and things start going downhill and then you want to say okay i think i made a mistake i don't think this was of god listen that's your marriage if that man or woman ain't killing you, if that man or woman ain't abusing you and hitting you and doing all of that, that's your marriage. If it is physical, sweetie, go and find the nearest police station and you know what to do. Get out of that. I will never sit down and advise any person, married, um, 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 safe, unsafe. I would never sit down and tell any man or woman to stay and up in an abusive relationship never i would never do it just as well as i would never advise anyone ex accept for 
abuse, physical abuse, I would never advise divorce. Because that ain't my that ain't in my place. It isn't my place. And so what I would advise someone to do in that matter, if you're not being physically abused, but the relationship is going, hey, why? And you knew it wasn't of God, pray and fast and let God deal with it. God have a ways, a way of um God and have a way of making a way of escape. He has a way of making a way of escape. Learn. I don't really want to dig into this, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I knew I wasn't supposed to be in the relationship that I was in. And I said to God, God, I made a mistake and I know this wasn't of you. A few weeks later, I had a dream and I saw some things and I asked some questions. Are you cheating on me? No, 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 no. I asked, the are you cheating on me? No, 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 no. It so happened that I came upon the person and I discovered that they were cheating on me. I, you couldn't hide that because I saw with my own two eyes. And then I was able to leave the relationship because I was clear. My mind was at peace because I was like, okay, you cheating on me. That is it. It over. And so once you begin to pray and you fast, God usually makes a way of, of escape. Don't try go looking for a way of escape. Don't say, you know what? Let me go and cheat. Let me go sweetheart. Let me go and do this. Let me do that. Let me be mean to them. No, you be the wife and you be the husband that God called you to be. You, you do what you're supposed to do. The, you may be a good Christian woman or a good Christian man and, and, and your spouse is going out sweethearting and doing all of that. Listen, pray and fast. God will make a way of, an ex, of escape. He will. And so that is my advice. That's, I'm not telling you that it's perfect. I'm not telling you that's what God is saying. I'm just giving you my personal um, advice and opinion. If you've been in a relationship for over 30 years, you knew that wasn't the person that you were supposed to marry. You've been catching hell for the past 30 years. Listen, pray and fast. Put it before God. Leave it alone. He will make a way of escape. Someone asked me about mentorship. Listen, um, I would like to do it, but I really, I don't have the time. I, I really don't. The time that you would need to mentor people, I really don't have that time. Um, the most I can sell for is probably trying to try my best teaching on, 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 on Facebook Live, you on Facebook and, and, you know, little inserts and little things that I, 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 I write. Uh, but when it comes to mentorship, I really don't have the time between working shifts and then, you know, it's so much different things I have on my plate that I, I really can't dedicate the time to that right now. Um, somebody asked a, a question about, um, did you, they, just, they asked some questions and based on the questions that they asked me, I know that they are dealing with um, a spirit of setback um, delay. If you um, finish school, you finish high school, and from the time you finish high school, you've been trying to go to college, but then for some reason, there's always a reason or something to block you from going to college or going to school, something to block you from getting a job, something blocking you from, you know, progressing. More than likely, you're dealing with a spirit of delay. You're dealing with a spirit of delay. You're dealing with a spirit of setback. Um, you Also, it could be generational curses. Look at your mother. Look at your father. Look at your great grandmother mother, and see what the what the um um consistent uh traits or characters is or common denominators. Let me say that. Look for the common denominators, and more than likely, if you go back to generations, you will see the common denominators, and that's how you'll be able to see if it's a generational curse. Because if you okay, um, mommy come out of high school, or mommy didn't even finish high school and she get pregnant, bam, she couldn't do nothing else with her life. Grammy, you know, didn't go to school. She she came out of school in grade six, then she sat up and children couldn't do nothing else with her life. You finish um 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 school, but for some reason you can't get to college. You can't. It's more than likely a spirit of setback, a spirit of delay, and it can it could be a generational curse. So I would advise for you to not only just pray, but you got to do um, um, some fasting in order to break uh, the covenants that may have been made in generations past and to break the spirit of delay and to break the spirit of uh, setback. You also want to fast to break the spirit of procrastination. Amen. And so um, that I hope that answered the question. Um, another person came up with a very 
interesting question. They asked me the question. They say, listen, I was at um, a particular church and these people had prayer all night. After they had prayer all night, they did certain things. I don't want to say it because, you know, I don't know who's listening, but I know the person who sent me the question will be able to understand what I'm saying. If you've been in a prayer all night with somebody who's supposed to be a pastor and some other people from churches, let me tell you something. The first place, this, the first thing you went left is this prayer is supposed to be all night. Light bulb going off. In a way, in Jesus' name, as a single woman or married woman, if my husband ain't there, if he there, that I'm going to be in somebody's church in the middle of the night, fasting all night, if it ain't just a shut-in, that the whole church come into agreement with. Because it ain't going to be me and just a couple people, me and just the pastor, or me and just two friends um, who say that God say, come to the church and we got to stay there all night. For me to pray for you and then do some other things. If it's song weird, more than likely it's weird. If it don't sound right, people, more than likely something wrong with it. And most of the time, if it's not by God, you all listen to me very carefully. And I leave it right now. I probably have one more question and somebody asked me leaving right now. Um... Be careful. Some people, they are led of God to give you certain things. It may be a cloth. It may be um, olive oil. It may be even monies. They may be led to say, okay, God said to give you this $5 bill or God said give you this $1 bill. God said give you this $100 bill. Don't spend this $100 bill. Leave it in your wallet. But, but you have some people that just do certain things, but it's not from God. And this is the reason why the spirit of discernment is so very important. You got to have discernment because as soon as you, if you have discernment, when somebody says something, it either would resonate with your spirit. You will feel that on the inside of you, the baby on the inside of you will leap. If it is of God, if it's not of God, you'll be like, this song weird, but, um, Okay, because this past I can do it, but this don't sound right. If, if, if the bell's going off in your head, more than likely, that is not of God. Now, you have sometimes God will say, okay, give this person an oil or give this person this $100 bill or give this person this. It, sir, these things happen. It, 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 in, 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 um, when the Egyptians was coming out, God gave the instructions that they must put the kill the the, the, the thing on the animal and put the blood on the on the doorpost and that was to signify when the spirit of death was passing that the spirit of death will recognize the blood on the door and would pass over there's certain things that god do but then you will know that it's of god it will resonate in your spirit but there are some things that are not of god is somebody telling you go to the beach at 12 o'clock in the night spend around seven times take a dip three times and then turn around get back up throw some salt behind your back and then up seven times listen God don't do foolishness, man. God don't do fool. Man, listen, I just I, I just feel so sorry for some people. But some of these people, some of y'all doing the strangest things. I read a message a little while ago from somebody, man, and I, I wanted to cry. I, how these prophets be around here telling these people these things and prophesying to them and taking their money and things. You know God ain't never tell you um, um, this person can get married. You know God ain't never tell you this mortgage can get paid off. You know God ain't never tell you that. And then this person can go now, take all of their money, or um, as a matter of fact, go and get a loan, give you 20 grand, 50 grand, 100, you, come on, give this profit now, 50 grand, 20 grand, give this profit money, take out all their life saving, give it to this profit. And this profit sitting up there knowing that God ain't never tell them. So how do you feel looking at this person when the host get taken? But you can tell them, oh, that probably was God's will. But you just tell me a year ago that God say, give you uh, 20 grand and my host can get saved. The same 20 grand when I could have gone put it on my house or my car or my children tuition. But you tell me, God tell you to give you this money and then this can happen. Listen, people of God. 
go out on too full. And sad to say, many of you that did this, you entered into a covenant with these people. And that's the reason why you can't be successful in many things that you're doing now. That is the reason why many of them can say, if you leave my church, you will never, ever, ever, ever make it. If you leave my church, you can die. You know why many of them could say that? Because the door is already open and they already have legal jurisdiction in your life. By you making that exchange, by you coming into agreement, by you making that covenant with them. That's why I'm very careful when people message me and tell me, pray for them. Because I have to know what I'm coming into a covenant with. If I'm praying for you, I need to know what I'm coming into covenant with. If I'm coming into covenant with you, asking me, um, um, Marvel, can you pray with me? Because um, me and my baby daddy, we living together and I want to get married. But we having sex all night and we living together. But you want me, the prophet, to pray for you. And your boyfriend, because you think he's sweet hatting on you. Sweet girl, you all up in a heap of mess. Don't ask me to pray, pray them type of prayers. Uh-uh. You ain't gonna want me to pray for you. Because by the, by the time I finish praying, you might be um, running outside, but, you know, fire might be up underneath you and you running up um, from underneath that house. There's certain things I have to know when I come into agreement with. And so many times people will message me certain things. You know, and, and, and the spirit of the Lord, you know, just the, 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 the light, the, the light bulbs is be going ding, 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 off in my hand. And God say, don't you touch it. And the same for everyone. Sometimes you may message me and say, oh, that's my shame. Never answer my, my message. No, the same for everybody. Sometimes I'm really busy for true. And sometimes, listen, people, I just hold my phone and I think I'm messaging people. But sometimes it's be all up in my head. I just think I answer people, like, but I send you a message. I'm like, no, you never send me no message. Like, really? I really didn't answer you? Sometimes, listen, sometimes we're so busy and tired if y'all only know. If y'all only know. I try to answer as much as I can. I don't like phone calls. I don't like talking to people on the phone. I really don't like the phone. But if you message me, I more than likely will answer you on a text or a message quicker than I will answer a phone call. Most of the time because I'm busy or most of the time because the phone is on silent or I just don't play in like humming. I just don't like being on the phone. It's a problem that I got to deal with. I do not like phones. I don't. So half the time my phone is being on silent and I don't even know it on silent. And when I finally realize it's on silent, I have a whole a bunch of messages on my phone. And I now got to be telling people, sorry, my phone was on silent. Sorry, my phone was on silent. Sorry, I didn't see the call. My phone was on silent. It's not intentional. But you would reach me quicker if you just send me a message where I could just send you a message right quick. But people, let me tell you all something. Most of the time, some things that I that 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 people would ask you to do, you have to be very careful because you have to be careful of what you get in covenant with. Once you go and you release that seed to somebody, you come into a covenant with whatever that person is, whatever they are. If that person is a lesbian, if that person is a is a, is a liar, if that person, whatever it is, you, you sowing into that. That's what you're sowing into. And so you have to be careful what, you, what you're doing. And so it hurts my heart to see people taking their last and then still turn around and have a problem. You taking your last because some prophet told you that if you sold this money, your house can get saved. That time you're trying to save your house. You're trying to save your marriage. You're trying to save your children. You're trying for this court case of your son to just, you know, vanish. But they telling you all kind of lies or so five grand and your son can be free. I cut my eyes because I want to say some other things. I cut my eye because I want I won't call some of these people some animals, but I am I'm, I'm a safe woman and I so I can't say certain things. Some of these I can't even find a word. That some of these fakers and suckers, you know, suckers, the people that will leech them leash on you and they will suck and suck your blood out. 
and wouldn't stop sucking until you literally drain of all of your life force. That's what they is. You'll be going to that same day, six years, ten years, and as long as you could give, or oh, you use their best friend, they prophesy to you every day. But the minute you say, I can't, things, things mash up. You're going to be successful if you believe that the church, this can happen to you and they can send this person, they can do that and they can do that. And the door is open, why? Because you already come into the covenant with them. And so, so people, we got to learn how to break some covenants. Please, the person who asked and who went to church and was in prayer all night, uh, please do a 24 hour um, prayer and break all covenants. Because what is what is happening now is a lot of people use prayer and using these things. Church as we to watch and to have one experts to monitor you so that they can have information on you so that they'll be able to prophesy to you. Case closed. I'm done. I finish, okay? Somebody asked me a question. They have a situation with their baby daddy. Um, they was living with this person and um they got they had a kid and, and they got saved. And when they got saved, you know, eventually things got a little rough because things couldn't get, you know, things couldn't be things no more. And so um, they eventually left the place and lived in someplace else and trying to live a safe life. And I could understand that when you just got saved and you was living with somebody and you say, okay, you know what? Um, I have a boyfriend or I have a girlfriend, but I won't rededicate my life because I feel God is calling me. But you were in a tough situation. You, you was living with your boyfriend or you was living with your girlfriend. And, and you feel like, you know, God was calling you. You want to um, have a child together or children together, but you feel God is calling you and you're in a situation like, Jesus, where I can find this rent money or where, you know, what I can do now. Um, you get saved and you realize, you know what, of course you're not having sex anymore. You're trying to refrain from having sex. Of course things can get strange because if that person don't support you as a Christian, um, the first thing they can say, you know what, um, I work in, Things a little rough, but I think you can probably go find one efficiency because you say you're trying to be saved. If they support you, you say you're trying to be saved, boy, we see if you can find a little efficiency and we can try to make this right. And boy, I think we can have to get married, boy. You know what I mean? Just if they support you. Now, if that fellow or that joker ain't supporting you, you know what they can say? Oh, you ain't enough sex with me. Well, go, go from around me then. They don't care about the baby. They don't care about where you get diapers or milk from. They don't care about none of that because their main thing now is your body. That goes to show you, that should show many of us as women, many of us um, being in a relationship. Listen, most of the time, it's only one thing that people want. And the minute they can't get what they want, you mean absolutely nothing to them anymore. And so if you find yourself in a situation like that, I would advise you, especially if you already cut ties as in you already in the relationship, but the person being manipulative when it comes as in with the child, with your child saying, oh, you don't want them to see the child or they being manipulative saying, I said, I'm not going to give you any money for the child because you don't want to sleep with me. Honey, let me tell you, I, my daughter is 18 and my son is now 10 and God has been doing it for the past eight years. And so look at me. I have an 18 who's now going to go to college and I have a 10 year old. God did it for eight years. I took care, as a matter of fact, I take care of both of my children most of their lives by myself. Not because I wanted to, but because I had to. And so when you see a man is manipulating you and telling you that if you can't have sex with them, that they ain't taking care of yet their, their children, sweetheart, tell them the Lord can bless them and do what you can do for your child or your children. And the Lord will provide. I am living proof that God will provide. There were many times in the future, I'm like, God, I don't know how I can make it. There were many times I sent my daughter to school hungry, not knowing where the next dollar can come from. And guess what? By the time my daughter came from school, hot food was on the stove. God will provide. Many times because God provided that day, I was able to pack lunch the following day and say, baby, you will need to take this to school. And so when I tell you God will provide, he will provide. Never will he allow 
allow his seed to beg for bread. And so if you're in a situation and you're really serious and you're really trying to be saved and live a godly life, listen, keep yourself. It can be a little tough. Especially if you just come with a sexual relationship, it can be a little tough at first because the body can be the body can fight you. I'm telling you, it can fight you because the body can want what the body wants. It can fight you. But ask God to keep you. Ask the Holy Spirit to remain with you. And He will keep you if you want to be kept. He will keep you if you want to be kept. And God will provide. I've watched many people that were in that relationship and they left it alone and they sacrificed and they say, God, I only want God. And these people are married today with great families. I watch God did it for people. I watch God do it. And so it's possible. And so I've been on Facebook long enough. Thank you, people. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Thank you so much for sticking with me and listening to me babble and listening to me run on. <laughs> And listening to me run on, I love you all, people of God. Blessings to all of you. Listen, we need discernment in this time, man. We really need discernment. Some foolishness happening, some things happening. <laughs> we need discernment, people. We really do need discernment. Um, blessings to all of you um, that came on. For those of you, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, if you only subscribe to my YouTube pages yet, please do go ahead and um, subscribe to my YouTube page. Um, there are a lot of um, information there. It's free. It's free. You ain't even got to pay for it. The subscription subscription is free. You ain't got to pay for it. All you got to do is subscribe. I just want you to subscribe. But go and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Listen to the videos. You can have them on pause. You can have them on repeat. You can listen. Listen to them. Play them in your car. Listen. The information is there. It's there. Most don't look at mother. Don't look at the individual. Well, don't look at the PC here. Don't look at the little, you know, acne prone skin. Don't look at none of that. But listen to what God is saying. Listen to, to what God is saying. He's speaking to his people. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be successful. If it wasn't, um, if it wasn't so, then God wouldn't have me sitting up here talking to you for almost what? Two hours? How, how long have I been talking to y'all? It's almost two hours, an hour and 40 something minutes. Not because I want to. I could have been watching um, Lifetime Christmas movies or Hallmark. I love Hallmark movies. I could. That's what I could have been doing right now. Watching some Hallmark movies. Turn on Daisy for me. I could have been watching some, some Hallmark Christmas movies. But he said, I need you to come online and, and speak to the people. Um, and so I came on and speak to the people. And I tried to answer some questions um, as best as possible. I hope that... Um, um, I hope that I answered your questions. And so for those of you who have any more questions, please do email your questions to prophetess Marva Lewis. It's um, um, M-A-R-V-A-L-O-U-I-S at gmail.com or send your questions to my messenger page, Walking Into Destiny Live. If you're attempting to reach me, please reach me on the Walking Into Destiny Live page and not... Um, the Marvel Lewis page. I'm not usually on that. I share things on it from the Walking Into Destiny page or through the Walking Into Destiny page. I'm usually not on that page. And so please do um, go and um, um, if you have not yet followed uh, me on the same page right here, please do go and follow me on Walking Into Destiny Live. And please do go and subscribe to the YouTube page. Um, I'm going to upload this video right now to YouTube because some of the people that ask me questions are from YouTube or viewers on YouTube. And so blessings to all of you. Thank you for subscri subscribing and thank you for watching. I really do appreciate the YouTube watchers and I really do appreciate you here on Facebook. Um, may God continue to bless you. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all of the honor that is the one to your name. I thank you, Father God, for all of your people that uh, came on and that listened to this broadcast. And I pray that you may enlighten your people, Father God. May you cause them, Father God, to come into knowledge, wisdom, and understanding like never yet before. May you give your people, Father God, impart to your people tonight, Father. Impart to them, Father, 
uh, uh, discernment, the spirit of discernment, that they may be able, Father God, to discern that which is good, that which is evil, Father God. For them to be able to discern, Father God, what you are saying in this season for so many vouchers uh, out there seeking, Father God, to devour them. But I pray, Father, that you will, Father God, protect them, watch over them, guide them, Father, as the shepherd, as the chief um, shepherd of our life. May you continue to watch over your people, guide your people, protect your people, Father, in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Somebody come on and magnify the Lord with me. Listen, I cannot see. Like, I took off my glasses, so I really can't see because the camera is kind of far. Uh, but blessings to all of you. I think I see my sister Martha. Um, blessings to you, honey. I think I see my sister Martha. Blessings to all of you. Chantel, Donna, Alex. Alexander, um, Chantel Fox, Tamara Lala, Cindy, um, Dulce, is that Dulce or Dulce? I don't know how to pronounce it. Cannot, Carnetta, hey, Miss McDonald, how you doing? Sandra Knowles, blessings to all of you. Um, yes, Martha, it's prophetessmarvelous at gmail.com. Um, thank you, Martha. Um, Nicolette Anderson, hey, how, how you doing? Shanette McKinney, listen, some familiar names. Blessings to all of you. May Abba continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to bless you. Rhonda, um, anointed one, Ferguson, blessings to you. Um, greetings and good night to all of you. Thank you for tuning on in. May God continue to bless all of you. Listen, um, all of the information, um, I think I will put the link uh, for... Um, the link for the purpose videos. I have a lot. Of, uh, I think I have a few of them. I will put the link on Facebook and I will put it on um, uh, YouTube uh, for those that were asking or saying they don't know what their purpose is. Um, I will go and look for that and I will put it in the comment section and on YouTube and on Facebook. Blessings to all of you. You all have a good night. Love you guys.